What's going on, guys? It's Greg here, a.k.a. NY Prepper. It is Saturday, September 23rd, 2023, and I have some breaking news to share with you guys. Right now it is 12.18 p.m. Eastern Time here in the United States, and we currently have a B-52 nuclear bomber flying over the panhandle of Oklahoma, and it just took off from Norman, okay, Norman, Oklahoma. And we also have a presidential doomsday plane on its way to Europe, and it got aerially refueled off the coast of Cape Cod by two KC-135 Stratotanker aerial refuelers. So a lot of doomsday planes going to Europe, a lot of VIPs going to Europe. I'm not sure why there would be a doomsday plane going to uh, Europe now because they just had the uh, defense minister's meeting last week or this past week. Um, so I don't know why there would be any uh, you know, VIPs going to Europe now, but nevertheless, a presidential doomsday plane heading towards Europe Okay, maybe Biden is going to make a surprise visit. Maybe Lloyd Austin is going back there. I have no idea. This is very unusual. And then having that B-52 in the air today as well is pretty unusual. And uh, we had another nuclear war command and control plane up in the air this morning. And it went out to the Atlantic off the coast of South Carolina where it disappeared from uh, flight tracker, and uh, it turned off its transponder somewhere off the coast of South Carolina. And then there was that one nuclear war command and control plane uh, off the coast of Cape Coral. And that thing was up in the air for probably like 10 hours or more. And then it shut its transponder off. So uh, I don't know what ended up happening with it. But lots of nuclear war command and control planes, another nuclear bomber, another doomsday plane, um, and if that's not enough, I want to show you guys something. Uh, the CDC just posted on their Instagram uh, about what to do in a radiation emergency. Three days ago, they posted this. Okay, so if you go on to Instagram, just go to type in CDC in the search bar. And they just posted this literally three days ago. Okay, so let me just show you. Uh, what it says here, it says, in a radiation emergency, get inside, stay inside, and stay tuned, okay? So, um, you know, they're supposed to be doing this uh, nationwide emergency alert system test on October the 4th at 2.20 p.m. Eastern time, and uh, that's a uh, drill for nuclear war, Okay. There's no other reason that the U.S. government would send out a nationwide emergency alert unless it was for a nuclear war, okay? That's how we would be alerted if uh, missiles were coming our way, all right? So uh, very strange that they would suddenly post this uh, three days ago, okay? So I want to just uh, talk to you guys about what's going on in Ukraine and in Europe. Uh, we have some major breaking news coming in this morning. Uh, apparently, Ukraine has broken through Russia's final defense line in the Zaporizhia area, which is the uh, southern part of Ukraine. And uh, this was known as the Suravikin line. This was that uh, famous defense line that Russia built to stop the Ukrainians, and in one area they were they were able to break through, and this was confirmed by General Tarnovsky, and he's the guy who's leading Ukraine's counteroffensive along the southern front line, and he reported that his forces broke through near Verbove, okay, and he's predicting an even br bigger breakthrough to come, okay. Um, so this is absolutely huge news. Let me just show you guys this video uh, taken from Ukrainian forces as they're driving through the Suravikin line. This is the heavily fortified defense line, and Ukraine has just penetrated it near Verbove. 
You can see these uh, dragon's teeth everywhere. Okay, these are uh, made to uh, stop tanks. Okay, if you remember a few months ago, they were showing all the satellite imagery of these dragon's teeth, and now the Ukrainians have uh, circumvented it. You know, it looks like they actually built a road, or maybe this was a, a Russian uh, road that the Russians built. Looks like some kind of a checkpoint over here that was established. So, um, you know, it's, it's hard to say if the Ukrainians built this road, uh, you know, with excavators or if, um, this was a Russian road that it was already existing, but nevertheless, the Ukrainians have penetrated the famous Suravikin line. And I want to read to you a little bit more about what this general is saying. And he's saying that, um, the liberation of Tokmak would be the minimum goal of the counteroffensive. And he said that uh, unlike in the movies about the Second World War, uh, things don't progress as fast as people think. So he's basically saying it's not like the movies, things take time. Um, and then he said that uh, the counteroffensive will uh, continue even through the winter and he said that it's not the winter weather and, and the rainy season is not going to heavily influence the counteroffensive. That's what he said. He says it's not expected to heavily influence the counteroffensive. OK, so they're going to they're going to continue through the rainy season and through the winter. All right. So, uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see how this plays out. We'll have to wait and see what Russia does in response but um, huge news yesterday, um, the uh, Ukrainians took out the commander of the Russian Black Sea Fleet, okay? This has already been confirmed 100%, all right? Uh, the Ukrainians used British Storm Shadow missiles to successfully uh, launch a strike on the Black Sea Fleet headquarters where uh, the commander of the Black Sea Fleet was, and they, they eliminated him, uh, which is absolutely crazy, guys. I mean, that is just, imagine if Mexico launched cruise missiles and took out one of our admirals, you know, uh, that would be very serious, you know. So Ukraine is definitely making some gains, um, you know, slow and steady progress, and we'll have to wait and see what Russia does, but uh, the defense minister of Russia, Sergei Shoigu, yesterday said that uh, the fact that Ukraine used Western missiles to conduct this strike means that the U.S. and the U.K. are now parties to the conflict and that Russia was going to start targeting decision-making centers. So, um, you know, I don't know what that means exactly. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, Russia is obviously not happy about it. And uh, if Ukraine successfully uh, pushes through uh, the Zaporizhia area and let's say they reach Tokmak or they reach Melitopol and they start to cut that land bridge in half, that's when we have to be concerned that, you know, Putin could resort to using nuclear weapons. Um, we have some breaking news coming from NATO. Apparently NATO uh, conducted the northern coast's defense exercise off the coast of Estonia and Latvia, and it involved 14 nations led by Germany with 30 warships, aircraft, and over 3,000 personnel. And the goal of this exercise was to repel uh, or to uh, practice a scenario for repelling a Russian invasion as part of the implementation of Article 5, okay? We also have some breaking news that Germany is going to be transferring the first batch of Taurus missiles to Ukraine in the near future. Um, so the first batch is going to have 45 Taurus missiles. The second batch is going to have 50, um, and they're going to be transferred to Ukraine uh, no later than November the 10th, Okay. So it looks like this counteroffensive may actually take place in the winter time because Ukraine is finally getting all the equipment they need. They're going to get the ATACMs now. They're getting the Taurus missiles. They're getting the Abrams tanks. It looks like 
this counteroffensive might peak in the winter, which is going to be uh, pretty interesting. We haven't seen winter warfare on a large scale since uh, World War II or Korea. So we'll see how things play out. Um, and uh, we're hearing also that the Pentagon is going to supply Ukraine with 30 ATACMS missiles and three transport loading vehicles uh, no later than October. And um, apparently the Abrams tanks are already in Poland ready for transfer to Ukrainian territory, which will take place at night starting tonight. Okay, so they already have the Abrams tanks in Poland and they're going to start sending them to Ukraine tonight. Okay, uh, we also have some uh, breaking news coming from Ukraine's special operations forces. Uh, and they said on Telegram that the strike on the Russian Black Sea Fleet headquarters was named Crab Trap. And it was timed on purpose to strike while senior members of Russia's Navy were meeting. And their goal was to basically eliminate the senior leadership of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. We also have some breaking news that Moscow was planning to increase Russia's defense budget from 3.9% to 6% of GDP. Okay, that's pretty uh, serious, uh, serious increase there. Uh, we also have some breaking news uh, coming from Armenia. Apparently, a U.S. congressional delegation led by Senator Jerry Peters has already arrived in Armenia to meet with the country's leaders. So uh, very interesting. And we also have some uh, breaking news coming from uh, Nagorno-Karabakh. Uh, here we have a picture uh, showing uh, apparently an Azerbaijani uh, artillery strike on Russian peacekeeping forces in Nagorno-Karabakh. You can see the Russian flag over here. And you can see this Russian soldier with the uh, Russian flag on his uh, shoulder. And uh, this is like the barracks, the, the base for these Russian peacekeepers. And so um, it looks like potentially Azerbaijan was purposely targeting uh, Russian forces, um, which would be uh, pretty, which would be pretty crazy if that's true. Uh, here we have a picture of the Texas Mexico border, and uh, Texas has already deployed their National Guard, and they're now patrolling the uh, border. And you can see a bunch of migrants here trying to enter, and you have some National Guardsmen here uh, standing behind some concertina wire. Uh, preventing them from entering into Texas. And this comes after the governor of Texas uh, issued an emergency order and deployed the National Guard to the border with Mexico. Um, and he declared that there was an invasion going on. So pretty tense situation right on our border, guys. Okay, right on our border. I want to just update you guys on uh, Tropical Storm Ophelia. It actually just made landfall this morning and it's currently over North Carolina, and it's expected to uh, turn towards D.C. and uh, the Delmarva Peninsula. So uh, this whole area here, uh, Chesapeake Bay and Delaware, Maryland, southern Jersey, it's going to be heavily affected by this storm. And I want to just uh, show you this uh, image here. This is exactly at the moment when Ophelia made landfall and it made landfall near Emerald Isle, North Carolina with maximum sustained winds of 70 miles per hour. Many uh, amateur meteorologists were saying that it was a category one hurricane, but uh, the National Hurricane Center stopped short of that. And uh, I want to just share some video footage of the um, storm here. So this is coming from Delaware, Bethany Beach, Delaware. Look at all the water here. Check this out. I mean, it's like two to three feet of water. And they said, oh, it's only going to be, you know, two to four feet of storm surge. It doesn't sound like much, but... You know, look at all this water, guys. I mean, 
that's that's pretty serious and uh here we have some footage coming from atlantic beach north carolina and you can see this giant pier getting pounded by waves and wind check it out And uh, here we have some footage from North Carolina, just a compilation showing some flooding and trees down. So check this out. Look at all the flooding here. A lot of trees down everywhere. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's the latest breaking news that I have. I'll probably do another update later. Um, I'll keep you guys updated. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Hit the bell notification so you're notified of uploads. And other than that, take care. God bless. And don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere.